My name is Jeffrey Frankel, and in this series of YouTube videos, I will show you techniques and tips to reduce the time it takes to deal with questions in Paper 1 of the IB Chemistry exam at both standard level and higher level. In this question, in this question the examiner is simply trying to find out whether you understand the phrase overall rate of reaction. And that is simply the sum of the powers for y and z, y and z, y and z, and here z and y, y is zero, so it's not included. And all you're looking for is when you add them up, when you add the powers up, which one is not equivalent to third order. Well, clearly it's C, because this is clearly a fourth order reaction. That's a fourth order, because the Y there is one, so that makes it a fourth order reaction. As soon as you read this and you see which conditions will result in the same initial reaction rate, there are two things you've got to do. You've got to have the same temperature, therefore it can only be A, C or D. And secondly, it must have the same concentration of nitric acid. The volume is less important. It must have the same concentration. When you look at it, 25, 1, D. Therefore, The volume is irrelevant. It must be the same concentration of nitric acid and must be the same temperature. So the answer must be D. This is a question that more often than not is a paper 2 question. However, occasionally it's brought into paper 1. When that happens, it, the, the numbers are much simpler. But the principles are the same. Let's look at the order for ClO2. We choose the two groups where the concentration of the fluorine is the same. That allows us to look at the chlorine dioxide. That is multiplied by 4, and lo and behold, that is multiplied by 4. Therefore, we have a for chlorine dioxide, we have a direct rate. It's either A or C. Then we look at the chlorine dioxide. We put, we look at the two, which are the same, that one and that one, and we compare. They've doubled the concentration and doubled the rate. Therefore, that's also first order. So we're looking for first order, first order, A. This is another question where the examiner gives you a lot of information and you start trying to work it out. However, the answer is a lot simpler. If you look through this, you suddenly realize that, wait a minute, this is minus one. These rates are negative for A and B simply because the concentrations are falling. A and B. They're the reactants and the concentrations are falling. But the rate for C, this must be positive because the concentration of C must be increasing. Therefore, you can immediately see that 3 is wrong. And if 3 is wrong, therefore the only answer that is correct must be A, without looking through the rest of the numbers. However, let us look at the rest of the numbers just to confirm that 1 and 2 are correct. At the start, there are 6 moles per decimeter cubed of A, and after 1 minute, there's 4. So that's right, there's 2, two moles have disappeared in 1 minute, and there, going from 3 to 2, 1 mole has disappeared in 1 minute, so that fits in with that, and therefore the rate for A is Loss of 2 per minute, that's true. The rate for B is loss of 1 per minute. So that fits. Those two are correct, and that one is wrong. So A is the answer. And it can be done very quickly. As soon as you realize rate for C must be positive, the rate for products must be positive, the rate for reactants is always negative. In this, the examiner is asking which is the rate determining step, and you know that the rate determining step is the slowest. Therefore, we're looking for the smallest number of moles and the longest time scale, and that gives us three. Step three, 
The smallest number of moles is 0.01. The longest time scale is per minute. So step three is the answer. That is the slowest step. The examiner is simply checking whether you understand the meaning of the rate determining step and whether you can see it when it's put in front of you. The rate determining step is the slowest step, which is that one. x2 goes to 2x, and here it is, x2 goes to 2x. Why look at any others? That is the rate determining step, the slowest, and it tells you that's the slowest. What is the rate expression for this reaction? You're looking at the slower step, which is x2 goes to 2x. So which one of these rates fits in with x2 goes to 2x? And clearly it's C. It's the rate is equal to K times the concentration of x2. All the others are clearly irrelevant. This is a question with a lot of ideas in it, and it does take some time to read through the ideas. However, it's easy to see which ones are correct. The reaction is second order with respect to both A and B. That is true. Two and two. So that's correct. The overall order of the reaction is four. Two plus two equals four. So that's correct. Doubling the concentration of A would have the same effect on the rate of reaction as doubling the concentration of B. That is clearly correct. All three are now correct. So one, two, and three. Very straightforward. Some people can do this in their heads. Some may have to write it down. So the reaction is first order with respect to M and second order with respect to Q. So let's write it down. The rate equals K times M and Q squared. Okay, so we put m equals 0.1 and q equals 0.02 squared. And they tell you the rate equals 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So it's a matter of doing a quick calculation. You can eliminate that and eliminate that. And K equals 1 over 0 0.02. For those of you who see this immediately, without bothering with decimals, you can see that 0 0.02 times 0 0.02 must be 0 0.004. 1 divided by 0 0.04 cannot be 10, cannot be 100, and cannot be 500. It can only be 250. Because 1 over 4 equals 0 0.25. And you then take into account all the other zeros and you bring it up to 250. That's, this is a question where those with a more mathematical frame of mind can do it quickly. Others may have to do this calculation slower. This is a, the examiners give you this quite complex equation which you've probably never seen before and they give you this quite complex rate expression as well and then ask you a few questions about it. Now in principle you're not necessarily expected to have seen this equation before or under even understand what's happening and you're not expected to have seen this rate expression before but using the principles that you have learned you will be able to answer the questions which statement is correct. The overall order is 12. No, the overall order is not 12. It's 2 plus 1 plus 1. So the overall order is 4. Doubling the concentration of all the reactants at the same time would increase the rate of the reaction by a factor of 16. Okay, so if you double that, that's 2. Double that, so that means 2 by 2 is 4. And then double that, that's 2 by 2. That's another 4. So 4 times 2 times 2. Let me write that down. So the double 2, 2, and 2 times 2. So yes, that is 16. That is clearly correct. Let's confirm the others are wrong. The units of the rate constant K are mole per decimeter cube per, per second. No, that's not right, because this is the units for a second order rate constant. The change in concentration of 
bromide ion or bromate ion does not affect the rate of reaction. Obviously that's wrong. But the changing concentration of these two ions does affect the rate of the reaction. So the answer is B. Doubling the concentration of all the reactants at the same time would increase the rate of the reaction by a factor of 16. That is the correct one. There's a lot of information given to you in this question, and it can be a bit confusing. However, you know that the rate expression if must apply to a slow reaction, because the rate determining step is a slow reaction. So you're looking for something where there's NO2 plus NO2, or 2NO2, and you look down here and you find the slow one, this one. And there you go there. NO2 plus NO2 goes to NO3 plus NO, or 2NO2 goes to that. That is the slow one, and that clearly applies to this rate expression. Everything else is irrelevant. This is another question where you're expected to determine the orders of reaction with respect to the reactants. The way to do this is to find two experiments where the concentrations of one of the reactants is held constant. So let's take this one and that one where the fluorine is held constant. And in this case, the NO2 is doubled in concentration. And then you see that that has doubled in concentration and the rate has doubled. And therefore, there's a direct relationship between the concentration of NO2 and the rate, and therefore that is a first-order reaction. Then you look at it from the point of view of keeping the NO2 concentration constant. So you go from this experiment to that experiment, and you find in this case the fluorine concentration has doubled, which is fine. And then you look at the rate, and then... It becomes a little bit unclear, and what I do in these circumstances, I change it. So it's 16 times 10 to the minus 4, so that the power of 10 is the same, and it becomes so much easier to see that that has doubled. With this one, you may have seen that. 8.0 times 10 to the minus 4 is half of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3. You might have seen that. But sometimes, especially in paper 2, the numbers given are less clear. And so it is so much easier to change the power so that you're not comparing powers and numbers, you're simply comparing numbers. So it's clear here now that we double the fluorine concentration, we double the rate, and therefore the power is 1. So it's first order with respect to NO2, and first order with respect to fluorine. And we go down here, and the answer is C. NO2 is first order, and fluorine is first order. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please say you like it, and subscribe to my channel, and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.